productivity powered by AI is what MSI calls this notebook. But can it run Unreal Engine 5 with ray tracing in my projects? And can I run motion capture in iClone using it? In this video, we will find out. In my day-to-day -day professional 3D animation work, as well as 2D non-linear editing in DaVinci Resolve or VFX compositing in Fusion, I usually work on my desktop computer. And that desktop has a RTX 3090, as well as a GTX 1080 uh, GPU, as well as a Threadripper. Recently, I've been more out and about uh, doing work. I've had the need for a professional laptop, which perhaps uh, might not be as powerful as my desktop, which still lets me continue my work. All of this while trying to keep the budget as low as possible. I was looking at the Razer Blade 15 as well as the Dell XPS. However, it was the MSI Prestige that piqued my interest the most. So in this video, I'm going to let you know what I think of it. And if you should pick it up if you're a 3D artist or a editor on the go that needs a powerful notebook, the MSI Prestige has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and a stunning OLED panel. It does cover 100% of the DCI P3 color space and it's easily one of the highlights of the notebook. The configuration I have has a resolution of 3840 by 2400 pixels. I would perhaps prefer a bit lower resolution to increase the battery life instead. Out of the box, I think the saturation is a bit too high and a bit too unnatural. So whenever possible, I would suggest switching to HDR in Windows which gives you a more natural and correct viewing experience. I'm a big fan of MacBook and their minimalistic design. And I do think that this laptop has the same design language. It's very minimalistic and it has a very clean design. It has a weight of 1.6 kilograms, which for a laptop this size, I think is very manageable. It's also 18.95 millimeters thin, and it does feel a bit thicker due to it having feet. But I mean, for uh, the specs it has, I'm not expecting a MacBook Air level of thinness anyway. It's built out of magnesium alloy and it feels very sturdy in the hands. It doesn't bend at all. When it comes to ports, starting from this side, it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack uh, next to a full size SD card reader, which is very nice. Something that I use very often working with film. Then it has a Ethernet port. On this side, it only has a Kensington lock. On the back is where you'll find most of the ports. So starting from the left, we have a HDMI 2.1 port, which supports uh, up to 8K 60Hz. Next to it, we have a USB 3.2 Type-A port. Next to that, we have a USB 3.2 Type-C DP port. And all the way to the right, we have another USB-C uh, Thunderbolt 4 port, which supports fast, fast charging up to 140 watts. Having a great touchpad is very important when it comes to laptops, as that is where you'll spend most of the time clicking around. And although I'm quite disappointed that the touchpad is off-centered, uh, I'm happy to say that it's very nice and tactile and very clickable, and it really responds to my fingers. However, I will still probably use a Bluetooth mouse whenever possible. I'm also very happy with the keyboard. It has a numpad to the right, and the buttons feel nice, soft to the touch, and clicky. The buttons also light up, you can toggle the brightness of the keys, and they have a very nice uh, white glow to them. So one of the main reasons that I bought this laptop is of course the performance of the laptop. The configuration I have here is a Intel Core uh, Ultra 9 185H processor. It has 6 performance cores, which can go all the way up to 5.1 GHz, 8 efficiency cores, two low power efficiency cores, as well as a NPU. This notebook also features a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 laptop GPU with eight gigs of GDDR6 video memory, working in Character Creator or iClone, Unreal Engine or DaVinci Resolve works very well, considering that it's a laptop, of course. It does run ray traced scenes uh, very well, uh, perhaps not as well as my desktop computer, but that is to be expected. The laptop is heavily promoted as a AI laptop, and I think the word AI is tossed around a lot these days. But I do think that the AI engine that MSI has uh, works very well for detecting uh, what kind of work you do on the laptop and switching from battery efficiency to performance 
to uh, keep up with the task you're doing and decrease the uh, GPU and CPU usage. So it's actually a feature that I like and not as much of a gimmick as I thought it would be. The MSI Prestige 16 also has Wi-Fi 7 capabilities, which means that it's able to reach almost 5.8 gigabits per second. And that's something that I actually didn't consider picking out a laptop, but has uh, proven to be very helpful in my day-to-day -day work. Uh, especially working with massive 3D files and video files to be able to download and upload uh, very quickly to send back and forth between the studio and to my laptop. So speaking as a cinematographer, the uh, laptop does feature a, a 1080p web camera. And uh, yeah, it's okay at best. It's nothing that I would use for anything else than video conference calls or Zoom meetings. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the web camera. It's okay. The notebook has what MSI calls cooler boost free technology. The fans are very quiet, especially during high performance tasks. Heat is probably one of the biggest cons with this laptop. It runs very hot, especially where I rest my fingers, especially in Unreal Engine and other performance tasks or gaming for that matter. In day-to-day -day tasks such as browsing the web or watching videos, of course, it's uh, cool with ice. When it comes to the speakers, I would say that they're okay. It's not the best that I've heard. It does have quite nice like lower frequencies like the bass and the mids. But the highs could have been better like out of the box. You can of course uh, improve it slightly with a equalizer to your own taste. But personally in real life I would probably never use the speakers in 90% of the time. Because I would use wireless Bluetooth headphones instead. So one of the things that concerned me the most when picking out a laptop was the battery life. Because if I'm stuck on a bus or a train for 6 hours I want to be able to keep working and have the laptop not running out of power. So this laptop features a 99.9 watt uh, hour battery, which means that in real life it can run for about two to three hours doing heavy talks, such as gaming or uh, freely editing. If you're just like browsing the web or watching YouTube videos, then it can perhaps last to around five to seven hours, depending on what you're doing. But worth noting is that it has a 140 watt fast charging port. So you can charge this laptop very quickly. So coming from someone who doesn't use laptops that often, I found the battery to be okay. But yeah, I guess for what the laptop actually offers in terms of specs, this is somewhat to be expected uh, in terms of battery life. Also gotta admit that it's nice to have a USB-C charging port. As I found like looking for laptops that it's still very common for some reason to use like proprietary strange uh, contacts. So if I'm going to like summarize my pros with this laptop, I would say that uh, for the price and for the uh, size of it, it's quite powerful and it's very like minimalistic and uh, uh, clean, which I really like. I think the battery life uh, could have been better uh, but like compared to the competition, I think it's uh, quite decent. If I'm able to, I'm probably also going to run it by wire most of the time. And like overall, I'm very happy with the laptop uh, when you think of the price. I paid around uh, $2,500 for uh, this setup. So in summary, the top three pros with this laptop, I would say, is the design, the screen and the performance uh, ratio to the price. When it comes to the biggest cons of this laptop, I would say that the number one is the heat that it produces during performance tasks, such as running Unreal Engine or gaming, as it becomes so hot to the touch that it physically hurts my fingers. And that's a bit difficult to overlook when it comes to a laptop, as your hand will probably most of the time rest on the uh, laptop itself. And even though the touchpad is great, one of the best I've personally tried, sometimes it doesn't register my finger. And finally, something that perhaps just might be me uh, not understanding how Windows or laptops work. Even though Windows is set to sleep uh, when pressing the power button, it doesn't actually make the laptop go to sleep. So I'm not really sure what's up with that. So that was my overall thoughts and review of the MSI Prestige 16 AI EVO. And even though it's perhaps not as powerful as my desktop computer for like professional 3D work, I do think that it's a solid uh, alternative when on the go, which is uh, 
kind of like why I bought it. So overall, I would say that I'm very satisfied with my purchase. If you have this laptop yourself, please let me know what you think of it. Consider subscribing to my channel to see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. If you liked this video, then you might perhaps like one of my other two videos here.